Hi everyone, today I just wanted to give you a very quick small update on Biogen, the Biogen add-on development. So, as we can see here in the end panel, things have changed a bit since previous versions. So this is version 10. Interface-wise, it's been very much stripped down. It's focused on some very definitive purposes. For example, things which happen above the surface, things which happen to the surface of the mesh, and things which happen within the volume of the object. So what we've been doing is I threw away basically all of the effects from the previous versions, and I've been working with Charon on new things, so new approaches. And everything here is basically a logic library that when you apply it to an object, it will just add a geometry nodes tree with the nodes ready to modify. I haven't actually tested this yet because I've just ingested a bunch of effects and it's probably going to error. Yep, there we go. Because I haven't actually gone through the process of renaming everything properly. So let's debug. All right, let's open the pack where we are. What am I looking for? Let's volume effects. We want mesh effects. Mesh deformation is there. Why could that not be selected? S mesh deformation. S mesh deformation. Do this, does it have to be like active? Find 109, 619, 105. Q import content. Append. Pen tree name, tree path. One sec. Linking VS Code to Blender. Sorry. This is basically just supposed to be a little news video showing you that work's been done on it, but sure, let's not let's actually do some work on it. All right, what am I looking for here? Let's print str. I don't know what string, what's not. Reload add-ons. Oh no, it's be tree name, not file name. Reload you. Do I have a terminal? Okay, let's see. So the name S mesh deformation pointing to the official pack. That's correct. Blender 4.5. Yeah, official blend. That's where we are. All right, before I narrow that down more, let me just make this more obvious in the print. But I want to find out more. File name, tree name, case S. Mesh effect import. Therefore, am I looking combining blend object? But it's not object, is it? It's node group. Have I not tested mesh objects since changing to V10? Hold on. If surface effects work, but mesh don't, then I might have done something dumb, which is not beyond me. So surface works. Oh, damn it. Okay. No way. Okay. So that's his object. Let me check surface effect. Surface effect. I know this isn't like great like TV for YouTube. Okay. Just bear with me while I fix this. Surface effect import. So that is. No tree, and that is tree path. Connection call. Hang on. Mesh effect. OPJ puppet. It's not an object because it's. Oh god! Please don't tell me. But it shouldn't be an object. It should be OPJ path and OPJ name. Right. Two missing required positional arguments. Six two one. Oh, but they can be nothing. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a bit of an inconsistency in the paradigm. Because for previous Biogen versions, mesh effects were more complex and object based. Because Biogen supports many different types of complexities for geometry nodes. You can have just simple geometry nodes trees, which get imported, but you can also have stacks of geometry nodes, like a modifier stack. And so the traditional mesh effects were more based around that, really. But since the paradigm's changing a bit, we uh, have to shift things around. So let's try mesh deconstructor. Will that apply? Yes, it will. Ah, oh, sick. Biogen version 10 is going to be less of a artsy tool, which it was before, and more of a logic tool. So we're still working on like the logics geonode wise, because rather than having like parameters for the effect in an external add on, and rather than having an asset library full of node groups that try and do one particular thing, I thought it would make more sense to have an object selected like this and to choose a particular type of logic. So in this case, the mesh deconstructor logic. From there, I thought it would make sense to let users access just the core logic tree, which can be composed of like multiple node groups if you wanted, so that they can plug in and play different elements to quickly and easily get the effect they want. So it's a bit of a different paradigm than just having an asset browser full of node groups, which they would have to, you know, drag and drop. Because for example, we can then compound the library. So let's say I do the surface distribution on top of the mesh deconstructor. In here, I can see now that we've got this transformation bus. It's composed of a translation layer, a rotation layer, and a scaled layer. And cleverly, this is imported an icosphere here and an empty object. Let's say I wanted these surface distribution points to react to the position of the empty object. All I need to do is look in for where we've enabled that functionality. So got scale by geometry, got scale by proximity. What I want is scale by proximity. I can see this is the scale line of the bus. All I need to do is just intercept the proximity scale here. 
So now when I move the empty in, the points are going to appear around that. However, as we can see, the selection by geometry is also plugged in here. I can just bypass that. But what that means by having that selection by geometry plugged in is that with the icosphere here, that will also help to define where those points are placed. So if I then just intercept that, so it's just scale by proximity, then we don't need the icosphere and we can just play with that. So here's the thing. I don't like truly understand a lot of geometry nodes, but I know what I want like artistically. And if I'm working on an object, maybe it's a character or something, when I'm looking at it, I think I either want to put something above it, like growing out of it, or I want to disturb the surface to make it dissolve in some crazy way. Or I want something to happen inside. And that's really the paradigm. It's just choose your logic for one of those layers and within the tree, modify it how you want. Because like, this is easier to teach people a system like this, rather than again, having all of these node groups disparate in an asset browser, and then hoping that people will know how to link them together when they could be all from different layers of abstraction. So here, it's quite simple in the way of, you can see the bus, you want everything to be scaled, you want only proxy scale. We can see here that this is the rotation line, but we can see we've got a node for rotation randomness. So in theory, if I plug that in, it'd rotate it randomly, but obviously we've got spheres, right? So you won't actually be able to see that. At the top here, move along normal bus. So this will define how far in or out the points can be placed. So let's modify that. There we go. So I'm modifying the outer. The inner is based on zero. There's also like a seed value to randomize that and a strength value. So they can all be clamped down, which looks a little bit gross, but cool. Or oh, bring it out again. So image object proximity displacement, it's plugged in or it's referencing the MT already. But if I plug that in now, then we're going to have much more of a proximity effect based on where that MT is placed. Do you see? So the simple line of it is, it's taking a long time for us to build this, but it's going to be a much more effective and functional version of Bygen than Bygen has ever been before, because it's more of a logic tool than an artistic tool, even though it's an artistic tool, if that makes sense. Now you'll notice that there's a disparity between like the layout design of surface distribution, which I'm really happy with, and something like the mesh deconstructor, which just is like a regular clump of nodes. Because while we're working on things like this, we haven't really applied that layout theory to everything yet because we're still working on effects and seeing well, what would be a good choice. But, you know, we can still start playing around and do really funky things like this. You see how we're digging into the mesh and the surface like distribution points are reacting to it. And a lot of this is animatable as well, which I'm quite happy with. I can play the timeline and see what's happening here. So in theory, you could apply this to a character or anything, but obviously the performance will depend on the geometry you're using. Let me modify the scale of the noise texture affecting this. There we go. Let me set this to my physical definition material and I'll do the same to the instanced points as well. So you can see here, let me save this while I make this might be an interesting demo. So now I'm really combining some, some effects because recently I've worked on this new material that I call my physical definition material. I made it for the alien embryo project and it's now part of my startup file, but it allows you to define like subsurface and transmission values based on a geometry proximity. If I add another geometry nodes modifier, I'm gonna put this at the beginning. Let me give it geometry proximity curve. So this is again, slightly more advanced Blender stuff. So don't worry if what's happening right now is confusing. I'm gonna take my geo proximity for the subsurf, put it in the center of the sphere. And I will also do that for the trans one as well. Distance sub, distance trans, output properties, distance sub distance trans those are defined there now i can recolor this let's do blue and red let's smoothen out the curves tee -hee -hee. now let me take the sub object and move it more to one side the trans object and move it more to another side let me disable some lighting stuff i wonder if i point the light straight through what happens if I solidify this as well now? So we've got like these kind of breakaway pieces. We've got slightly subsurf. We've got slightly transmissive on the other side. Actually, I'm going to bring the upper light back because I quite like how that looks. Although I also want those points reacting to it. So why? Oh, they're not reacting because they're not part of the object. So they don't have access to the attribute data. All right, I crashed Blender. Never mind. It was going so well. All right, we will just focus on this one thing. I'll just like quickly put, put this together in a way where it looks like, you know, a cool render. And then hopefully that will serve as a demonstration for like what we're going with for Biogen. Let's raise you up. 
Let's get a bit creative with the angling. Again, apologies for the chaos of the video. I did not know where I was going with this when I started. Let's open up a brief 3D viewport so I can see where the trans element is. I wonder if I can bring that up to the top a bit more so we get more of like the red light bleed. That's a bit too much, a bit too soft. We can see where it's a bit more glass-like here. But maybe, hmm, I don't know, I'm gonna sharpen up that fall off ramp on the object. Let's grab the proximity curve data, go back in, sharpen up the transmission ramp, go back to the trans object, raise that a little bit. Guys, such like a unique effect. I haven't really done anything like this before. Let's scale it out on the X so it's a bit wider. Maybe if it's just like internal layers, because I really do prefer the blue. Yeah, I'll try and keep it subtle just around the edges. Might need to rotate that slightly. So a little bit on the top left, a little bit on the bottom right. That's cool. I can get rid of the points if I want to. And we can also play that like an animation. See? Hell yeah. That'll make a cool background. Let's turn the speed down to make it slower. There we go. Now, obviously, because of the denoising, it's not super easy to see. But if I look at the same view in the viewport there, you can see what's happening in the corner. Check that out. So Biogen is becoming much more of a like logic centric library slash add on and hopefully it will allow you to get all sorts of like creative effects. I mean, even just by playing around with basic parameters, you're going to be able to do like all sorts of stuff. All right, cool. So if you made it this far through the video, put some kind of, what should we do? What's a computery emoji? Something logic related. Let's see, Windows key and period key. What we got? Computer, logic, hold on. We've got like save icons, disks, science. Put a disk related emoji in the comments if you made it this far. It's our emoji tradition on this channel. Support me on Patreon to increase the number of hours I can spend every month working on projects like Biogen. Have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time.